What better way to get more plants for free than to propagate the ones you already have? So today I am going to go through the basics for beginners on propagating your house plants. Um, now there are a few ways that you can propagate your house plants. Um, the most common way is water, um, but you can also use soil, you can use moss, and you can use uh, propagation pumice. So I use all of these techniques myself. Um, I prefer some over others just because it's easy and I find some techniques of propagation obviously a little bit more difficult to control than I do with others. Now water propagation is pretty straightforward. You get yourself a vessel, fill it with water, pop your cutting in, wait for it to grow some roots. Um, soil propagation again is pretty self-explanatory. You get a container, fill it with soil, take your cutting, plonk it in, keep your soil moist but not wet because you don't want to rot the cutting. Um, another method is using sphagnum moss. Same principle, take your cutting, jam it in the moss, keep the moss damp but not wet, um, and you should watch some roots grow. And another is using fine pumice or um, propagation sand. Again, take your cutting, plonk it in, the good thing about the propagation pumice is you can water it, the water runs straight through so you've got less chance of rotting your cutting. So there are a few ways to take cuttings from your plants. Um, for example, you can take node cuttings, which is basically cutting a section of the stem with a node on it. So things like pothos, uh, philodendron, tradescantias and sigoniums. They are super easy to propagate. And then there is also stem cuttings. So plants such as hoya, um, string of pearls, chain of hearts, lipstick plants. You're basically you're propagating from the stem. So you cut the plant, like for hoya, for example, cut the part, the plant anywhere along the stem and it will grow roots from any part of the stem. Um, things like string of pearls, chain of hearts, you take your strand off, you pull off a few of the leaves at the bottom, and then where the leaves attach to the stem is called the node, and this is where the roots will grow from. Um, another propagation method is leaf cuttings, so things like um, peperomia, uh, sansevierias, um, succulents and begonias in particular are quite common for leaf cuttings. Um, this essentially means you take a leaf off your plant, you can cut it in half, stick both cut ends in the soil and they will produce roots from the leaf. You can, essentially you can propagate anywhere in your home. Obviously some places are going to be more beneficial than others. So the most basic and the most simple place is a windowsill. Sunny, warm windowsill. Um, another place is a greenhouse, so if you've got a large outdoor greenhouse or a small indoor greenhouse, that is an ideal place to pop your cuttings in. Um, you can also use a clear plastic container um, with a sealing lid so it can trap in humidity. And Now that's really beneficial to the plants that love humidity and that actually need humidity to be able to produce roots. Um, you can also use accessories like heat pads. Heat pads are really good for the colder months. Um, essentially, you just pop it under your propagation box um, and that'll keep the plant's roots and propagation medium nice and warm, which will also help stimulate root growth. Um, you can use rooting hormone, so you can get it in either a liquid or a powder form. And essentially, you just take your cutting dip it in the rooting hormone and then pop it into your preferred propagation medium, whether it be soil, moss, water or pumice. So you can also use grow lights. Now these are not a necessity, but they do help, um, especially in the colder months when the daylight hours is a lot shorter. 
it um, allows you to have that propagation station away from a window. Um, you can have it on top of a shelf, you know, anywhere you like. If you have a grow light, your propagation station can be anywhere. Okay, so that was the basics. Um, that was just a, a little rundown on different <laughs> propagation methods. Now I will show you a few things that I have propagating. Um, I will take a few propagations to show you how to do it. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so first off, I am going to demonstrate how you water propagate. So essentially, you get yourself a vessel. Um, I like to get these thrifted glass jars from the op shop just because they are aesthetically pleasing. Um, you fill it with water. Now I'm going to show you how to take a stem cutting. So I have this lipstick plant here. Um, I will find a nice long tendril. Okay, so I'm going to take a cutting from this lipstick plant. And now essentially all you do is you snip it off. And what you want to do is just carefully strip off the leaves. So you have a bare part of the stem like this. Now, each one of the nodes where the leaves came off is where your roots are going to grow from. So the more of those little nodes you have into your potting or into your propagation medium, um, the more chances you are going to have of roots developing. So I've done that and all you can do is pop it in the glass of water and essentially just that's it. That is how basic water propagation is simple easy and it actually looks quite cute while it's um while it's doing its thing so i have a few other plants that i've been propagating in water so this is a philodendron and as you can see it has a whole heap of roots now philodendrons are really easy to propagate because they have aerial roots and as soon as you put the aerial roots into water they're, they secrete a rooting hormone, um, which obviously makes the roots grow like crazy. So things like philodendrons, pothos, syngoniums, they're super easy to water propagate. So this is a peperomia um, caparata. And this is another example of a stem propagation. So... You can see it's growing roots from the stem, but it's also growing a new plant from the stem. So peperomias are super easy to propagate. Now propagation is a great way to save a struggling plant. So this plant was actually dying from root rot in the soil. Um, because I had it in quite a low light area, the soil wasn't drying out fast enough. Um, so essentially all the roots in the soil rotted. So I had to cut all the stems back cut the stems into segments, uh, making sure that there was a few nodes on each stem, plot them in water, and they've been in water for maybe, maybe two or three weeks, and they've all got roots on that are about two inches long. So prop propagating via water is a real fail-safe way of propagating. Right here, so here I have a, a Peperomia um, maculosa. And I'm going to show you how to take a stem and a leaf propagation. So I'm just going to snap this leaf off from the plant here. So as you can see, it has a part of the stem and the leaf. Now I'm going to show you how to do a stem cutting and a leaf cutting. So basically you will grab a sharp pair of scissors, cut across the leaf. So this here is going to be my stem cutting and I'm essentially just going to pop this one into soil. So you take your leaf cutting, you stick it in the soil, lightly press around, and that is literally how simple propagating peperomia are. Now, don't throw away that bit of leaf that you cut off. So this will grow roots as well. Make sure the leaf is up the right way. So the tip will be sticking out and this cut part will be going in the soil. It will grow roots from all along here um, and it'll also produce baby plants. Again, take your leaf cutting. 
I'll just take this out to show you. Pop it in the soil. And that is literally how easy it is. So you can do this with peperomia, um, begonias. I actually have a little sansevieria here, which I don't know if you can see. But that actually has a whole heap of roots on. So basically just cut the leaf off the sansevieria, plonked it in the soil. So you make a little divot. Plonk it in the soil like so, and that will grow little pups that will come out, and then you'll have yourself a brand new plant. Propagation is literally so simple. I love it. Moss propagation works great for aroids, so plants that have aerial roots. Now, I'm going to cut my beloved Marble Queen here. So this is my cute little marble queen and I am going to take a node propagation from this plant. So under each leaf node is an aerial root and this is where your roots are going to grow from. So you can take your cutting from anywhere along the plant, like so. And I am going to cut again here and I will get two plants out of this one stem. So this will grow leaf, um, grow roots, and then a new shoot will grow from underneath this leaf here. This will grow roots, and obviously it's already got new leaves, so that will just continue growing. So essentially again, cut it like that. And there you have two node cuttings. And Moss is so easy, so basically pop that in there, pop that in there, grab a little bit more moss. Now you want to cover the whole, you want to cut. Oh. You want to cover up the whole nodes so the damp moss will encourage your roots to grow. So that is moss propagation. Here I have a Sansevieria cylindrica leaf cutting. Um, now I actually haven't tried this but I'm going to try this in the propagation pumice. So essentially all you do stick it down in the soil or in the propagation pumice, water the pumice, keep the pumice moist and then essentially it should grow roots. Okay so I'm just going to show you the cuttings I took. So I've got my Marble Queen and Sphagnum Moss. I have got my stem and leaf cutting from my Peperomia in soil. I have my Sansevieria cylindrica cutting um, that is in propagation pumice or sand. And I have my lipstick plant cutting which is in water. So I've had success with all these different methods. I do, however, find soil to be the most tricky with propagation um, because it is a fine line between keeping it moist and making it too wet. And that's something I still struggle with. So I prefer moss and sand and water as my three main ways of propagation. Um, I do probably use moss the most, um, especially because I do have a lot of aeroids, um, plants with aerial roots, so I find that they love the moss way of being propagated. They also love the water as well, um, and things like pothos and philodendron, they grow pretty hearty roots in water, so it's not such a big of a shock when you transplant them from water to soil as something like a lipstick plant, which grows really fine, um, thin little roots, so 
transplanting from this into soil can be a lot more of a shock for these guys than it would be for like a pothos or a philodendron. Um, I also find that the propagation pumice is really ideal for propagating hoya. Um, I do have some hoya in water, which works well, but I have had a few um, parts of the stems rot. So pumice I have definitely found to be the best way to propagate hoya. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I will start the propagation in water and then transfer it to a substrate. So say something like the Sansevieria, I will first propagate them in water, let them grow tiny little roots. And as soon as I see roots appearing along the bottom of the cutting, I will transfer to soil. Um, and again, this is just so once the plant starts growing, it's growing soil roots almost from the start. So the roots are gonna be nice and strong and healthy. And Sansevieria, when they, when you propagate them, will grow um, little offshoots, a little pups. So I like to have them already in soil. So when that happens, you're not planting a almost developed little plant into soil. So it's not such of a big of a shock, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, this concludes today's video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something new, and I hope this inspires you to experiment with your houseplants, um, create more babies for free, more plants equals more happiness, you know? Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!